Hey everybody and welcome to the bullshit party! And in this one we're gonna be taking a close look at one of the newest vehicles added to the game, the Buffalo STX. As always we're gonna be taking a look at its exterior, its interior, the way it customizes, handles, performs and all that good stuff in Los Santos Customs and ultimately I'm gonna be telling you if it's worth it. As I already said, this is one of the newest vehicles added to the game and as you could probably see it's based on the current generation Dodge Charger, which is a pretty pretty badass looking car. And if you didn't know, this car is an homage to Franklin's original vehicle because it was the older generation Charger, but uh, more about that in another video. For now let's see what type of interactivity we can expect from this one. And I'm very happy to say that you can open the hood, all four doors and the trunk. And if you couldn't already tell, I'm confirming it, you can fit four people in this vehicle. One driver and three passengers, which for you it's not going to be a problem because you don't have any friends and I believe I already made that joke several videos ago, so I'm not going to be repeating it. But in any case, this is the exterior of the vehicle and I gotta say I'm really, really happy with what I'm seeing so far. So let's jump in, uh, see what the interior looks like and hear how the car sounds. Okay, so the interior is on the okay side, it looks kind of like the bolder version of the vehicle, but uh, let's hear how it sounds. Okay, it doesn't sound that bad. Uh, let's see what type of drivetrain it has. And it should come to no surprise that this is in fact a rear wheel drive vehicle, just like the original and just like the vehicle it's based on. And with that useful piece of information out of the way, we're gonna go to Los Santos Customs to customize this bad boy. And on our way there I'm gonna be sharing with you my thoughts and impressions of my first time driving this stock vehicle. First off, it feels rather nice, doesn't feel bad at all. The traction is okay and the handling is predictable, even though it's kind of slippery because it's a rear-wheel drive vehicle. But it handles rather nicely, definitely one of the best rear-wheel drive handling vehicles that I've ever driven in the game. As for the way it turns, eh, it leaves a lot to be desired, but hey, you can't have it all. The brakes are surprisingly okay for the vehicle and for the size of it, and the acceleration is... I gotta say, pretty decent considering this is a muscle car. All in all, not a bad vehicle. Especially that I paid... How much did I pay for it? One second. Do, 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 do. Pretend you don't see this. Do, 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 do. I paid two million dollars for this. So it's not a cheap vehicle by any means. But uh, in any case, we're here at Los Santos Customs, so let's see what we can customize on this awesome, awesome today. vehicle. And as I already said, this is a part of the muscle car class category in GTA Online. And uh, as we do always, let's upgrade all the performance options up front, this way we don't forget anything and you guys are not gonna yell at me in the comment section, at least not for this. Transmission turbo, yep, and uh, the first uh, cosmetic option we can change is the front uh, bumper, actually the front splitter, I don't know why this is called a bumper, this is, this is the splitter we're customizing right now. Okay, next up we can customize the exhaust. I gotta say, uh, so far I am not uh, really impressed with the level of customization here. This vehicle was released literally minutes ago. I was uh, kind of expecting more, to be perfectly honest. You got great Muscle taste. car hood, intercooler. Okay, I guess that's kind of cool. Would have been cooler if the fans moved, but hey, you can't have it all. Here are all the liveries you can choose for this vehicle. And you guys probably know this, but I'm not a big fan of livery, so we're going to be keeping it stuck. Although this looks good. You know what, guys? I think I'm going to go for it. I'm not a big fan of liveries, as I was uh, trying to explain, but uh, yeah, this looks awesome. Especially with the white. I really, really like how this one looks. Lovers. It's kind of weird that they don't impact the traction or aerodynamics, but it is what it is, but we're going to put them on anyways. Mirrors. We can change the mirror style to carbon. Let's do that. 
license plate, of course, yellow and black. Roll cage, not my cup of tea, but here you have, what, six different options to go with. Roof, we can put several antenna on the roof, in case uh, you're into that. And we can also put an extra air intake, which I am actually going to do. Skirts, we can change the skirts. I don't know, there, there's something missing in the customization of this one. It feels kind of soulless, if you know what I mean. Spoiler, yes, we can uh, choose a different spoiler, which is, of course, going to impact the traction bar. The only visual customization that has any impact on the traction bar, in fact. And it doesn't matter which one you go with. Anything other than the stock spoiler is going to impact it, so be mindful of that. Of course, we're going to go with the lowest suspension possible, transmission, turbo, we already did. The wheels, I actually kind of like those, and since we don't have any new wheels in this DLC, we're going to be keeping them as is. Do light smoke on the window tint, and the final thing we're going to do is respray the vehicle. And I kind of like how the white one looked, so I don't know exactly what I want to do, but uh, actually, I know exactly what I want to do. I want to make it silver. So, so well, server? No, I want to make it silver. Ah, I'm sorry, guys. Too much coffee today. I'm really excited for this DLC, if you couldn't tell. Anyways, uh, let's make it silver and get out of Los Santos Customs and see how the vehicle looks in the sunlight. Or rather, in the fading sunlight. But uh, yeah, there you have it. As for the way it drives after we fully upgraded and customized it, um, there is a difference. I can definitely notice a difference. The car is much snappier in its acceleration. The traction is a little bit better, although it wasn't horrible to begin with. But the biggest difference I can I can see is uh, the way it handles. It's uh, remember when I said in the beginning that it handles kind of predictably, even though it's a rear-wheel drive vehicle. Well, I can uh, I can say that it handles kind of the same, but kind of differently. Uh, it handles very very nicely for a rear-wheel drive vehicle. It's it's incredibly fun to drive, and it's incredibly fun to just take power turns. Power corners? I don't know what those are called, but... Drifting! Drifting! To drift with the vehicle. Even though I'm not really good at it. But, uh, yeah, I gotta say, this one is surprisingly fun. And, uh, hmm... To answer the question, is it worth it? I honestly don't know. The customization was kind of limited. Even though the performance is all there, the vehicle costs over $2 million new, which is a pretty penny for it so if it's worth it i think it all depends on your perspective and if you think two million dollars is a lot of money if it is well i actually think you you can pass on this one because uh, even though this is the first vehicle i'm reviewing from this dlc i can definitely tell that there are gonna be much better vehicles in the contract dlc even though they're not going to be from the muscle car class category, but that's a story for another day. For now, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope it was helpful to you. If that's the case, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and uh, with all that said and done, I'll catch you all in the next one. I'm hungry.